Hello and welcome to SGN Tech Forum. In this video, I'm going to show you a new, cool, new, exciting feature uh, called running Docker container on Catalyst 9K, uh, popularly known as app hosting. And uh, running a Docker container natively uh, enable a user to bring their own application and, and you, without any additional packaging and you can run it directly on the uh, switch. Uh, so the agenda for the classes or uh, this video is uh, we'll see what are the prerequisite for app hosting then we will look at the switch readiness um, uh, from the hardware perspective then we'll go ahead and configure uh, put the network configuration whatever goes in on, on the switch and then we will in, in do a app install uh, finally we will do verification and at the very last i'm going to show you everything uh, on, live on working on switch and from the app side so what are the prerequisites? So on my screen, you can see prerequisite is Cisco Catalyst 9300, where we are going to install uh, the Docker image. Uh, SSD 120 USB storage. So you need a dedicated storage. That is sometimes very confusing part of it. Like uh, even in documentation, it says that USB flash. Uh, so the in internal USB flash or inbuilt USB flash will not uh, uh, is not supported to run Docker uh, container. You need an external SSD USB. Mind it, it's not a, any general USD. It's a uh, Cisco supported SSD USB, which you need to procure and insert in your cat 9K. I'll show you some picture how I did it, everything in detail. Uh, from software perspective, you need uh, iOS XE 17.1.1 or 16.12. At least you need 16.12, 17.1.1 is the, the brand new, so I'm using the uh, 17 .1 here. And from licenses perspective, you need a DNA advantage license for the bare minimum. This is how your USB will look like. So this is uh, a little heavy, and it it's, it it has the environmental um, uh, toughness on, so you it can run in the data center kind of environment if your switch is located to one, and. Uh, so you can look up the part uh, in Cisco Commerce and it will give you the pricing and all those details. So once you procure your USB, what you have to do is you have to go to your switch and look at the rear side of it. If you look at the rear side of it, you'll see that there is a uh, slot. This is basically an empty slot, uh, which says that you uh, USB 3.0 SSD and it tell you how to uh, uh, pull out this so it's showing me a screwdriver that mean I, I took a screwdriver to the DC data center and then just pull that it was quite easy once you pull you will have the empty slot and this this um, um, bl blanket cover will fall off you can see USB 3.0 SSD blank and once you have the slot available all you have to do is in, um, insert the the procured USB with Cisco facing um, um, to you and it once you insert, it's a hot pluggable. That means you don't have to switch on, uh, switch power off your switch. You can just um, insert it while the switch is uh, running. Now we'll talk about switch readiness. Uh, so show version. I'm doing a show version on my switch, and you can see I'm running 17.1.1 uh, Cisco IOS XE. When I inserted a switch. Uh, you can see that I got a log on my console that device USB flash one added and USB ha one, one has been inserted. So you will get this log and this uh, SSD slot is called USB flash one. To verify USB flash one presence, you can do show inventory and it will show you the USB flash one and it clearly says uh, SSD 120 gig. So that's where all my container storage um, is going to happen. Now let's see what we need uh, in terms of um, uh, Docker side. So you can bring any Docker application. I I, I didn't uh, build a Docker application myself. I uh, pick up an application uh, maintained by one of the uh, developer and he's kind enough to publish that. So Daniel Guerra Alpine uh, image. So it's an Alpine uh, Docker container which has the Wireshark inbuilt. I choose to download that. So how you can pull the Docker and build and save it. Uh, you can simply do a Docker pull with the URL. Uh, it will be, if you have the Docker enabled on your laptop, it will be downloaded to your uh, laptop. Then you can list all the images, Docker image. Uh, you will get the image ID for the newly downloaded, uh, downloaded image. 
and then finally you have to do a docker save so you do a docker save and install the image what you downloaded as a tar file so i use i choose to install uh, save it as X, xrdp tar so i named my application xrdp here and once you have the tar uh, the docker application saved as tar now it's time to move this tar file from your local uh, laptop to the switch so if you have any ftp server uh, or, or from your laptop you can do scp to a switch uh, however you want to transfer to the but you have to put this in usb flash one okay so this is uh, how you are going to uh, get the app uh, transfer to the switch now let's go to the network config so the which is very important so with uh, app hosting support a logical interface appears in your show run uh, or startup config it call ethernet app gigabit 101 so app gigabit 101 it's not a physical port i'll show you uh, the web ui you can see that it's not a physical port it's a logical port just like our virtual access uh, so with, with this programmable software a lot of logical interfaces uh, started appearing app gigabit ethernet is one of that uh, it is dedicated to support app hosting uh, you can also find bluetooth interfaces on on a cisco switch uh, which is again a logical interface so what we are going to do we are going to uh, configure it as a trunk that mean all the tra traffics uh, is allowed uh, on this link now for the switch network side config for app hosting iox is is a is a prerequisite iox is mandatory so iox x is a service which help you to run uh, the container and and the uh, app hosting services so you go ahead and just say conf t iox then you uh, we are going to do our app hosting configuration so i i have already configured that you can see show run pipe sec app host so app hosting app id give your app app id and then map the vnic so i'm going to say app vnic is app gigabit ethernet which is a trunk and i'm using two interfaces so <clears throat> If you're a little bit familiar about Docker, Docker is just like a, a, a bare minimum VM which has virtual Ethernet link, uh, NIC which mapped to a physical NIC. So in our case, our VNICs are guest interface one and guest interface zero, which is mapping to app Ethernet. So I'm using two, two interfaces, one uh, just for span or mirroring all the traffic and uh, the other interface has got an IP address which will help us to communicate to the outer world. So my IP address is 192.168.61.121 uh, uh, and the default gateway is pointing to the switch uh, which has the VLAN 61 configure. Then you can create an app resource profile. I choose to create an app resource profile but this is optional. Uh, if you don't uh, define your profile it will take the default uh, values. Then app initiation. So pay attention here. Uh, this is very import, important. Uh, you can see that uh, there are like series of process what you have to follow to start and initiate the container. And this, you follow the same uh, pat pattern in reverse order to destroy the container. So you can see that um, first you have to enable, then install, active, start, and then eventually you can connect to the uh, Docker container. And then if you want to stop, or destroy you do the same thing stop deactivate and then finally uninstall so we'll see that all in a demo but these these are like three step process so once you have the network config uh, network part configured app hosting then you come and simply say app hosting start your app id so it will deploy your app id now you can monitor this by using show app hosting list the state will change from deploy to running and eventually running then you activate it and finally you uh, uh, you install the app sorry so it's, it's actually you first install then act, uh, then activate and then start so it's, it's in this order first you install the app then you activate it and then you start and finally it should uh, look like this verification show app hosting list and XRDP uh, process is running. 
If you want to see uh, the detail about your app, you can simply say show app posting detail and uh, app ID and your app ID name and it will show you everything like what is the app name, if what is the state, what kind of memory and CPU or disk space it is taking, everything. Um, attach device type, what, what are your the different lines uh, uh, available, all those things you can see and the, your v, VNIC, so ETH0 and ETH1, as I mentioned, we are using two ETH uh, and which it, it, we will see that on the Docker container itself, but one has got IP, another is in bridge mode. To get uh, more information about utilization, you can say app uh, posting utilization, app ID and your app ID name, and you will see the CPU uh, allocation and the usage. Uh, now, finally, if you want to connect to your Docker um, container, so if you have de you have deployed your Docker uh, and now you want to connect it, right, to run some uh, maybe curl commands or maybe some ping commands to major latency or reachability anything. So here is how you are going to connect. So from switch, you say app hosting connect, app ID, your app ID name, and say session. Session will connect you to the contain container directly, and then you see the font will change to the hash. Uh, that means you are attached to container. Container. This is the default uh, in uh, Docker, Docker world. So if I do ps as a process, it is going to show me all the processes running. So you can see that whatever the applications installed, I have Wireshark installed, which I want to show you here. So a lot of other applications, but uh, I have the, this application is built with Wireshark which we will run uh, to see the uh, capture services. Okay, uh, now what if you have to, if you want to connectivity, you want to run some connectivity checks. So from Docker container, I'm pinging my gateway. You can see I can reach my gateway and then I'm going to ping my DSCP, central DSCP server. And you can see that I have the DSCP server reachability. So for me, I'm going to run a continuous ping or curl to one of my central server to monitor latency and reachability. But uh, you can choose what you want to do with your container. Uh, that, that is up to you, you can choose that. And uh, yeah, if initially probably we should have checked that uh, once you transfer, uh, you should have see XRDP tar in your USB. Uh, to stop, delete, just uh, reverse the order. So do a stop, deactivate, and then finally do an install. Demo time. So let me show you all this on the switch and then we will run the command, right? So I have all the commands listed here. Let me SSH to the box where this is installed currently 35 dot. I want to show you show version everything what I shown you on the notepad uh, or the word document I'm going to display you here let me do a term length zero uh, so you can see it's a 90 9300 switch running 17.1 and here it has a USB flash one and I have network uh, DNA advantage license okay good uh, let me show you inventory Inventory USB flash one DIR USB flash one. I I have transferred my XRDP dot tar file here, and now let's check the iOS iOX service. All my iOX infra services are running, which is a prerequisite for any app hosting. Then I have my app hosting. Uh, profile uh, configuration on switch and then you can see show app hosting list so app is running if I want to take um, some more verification I can do show app hosting um, detail app ID and it is showing me all the details about my application now time to connect to the uh, Docker app hosting connect app ID. 
and I want to show you other option so you can connect to the session that mean uh, connect without login only to docker app you can connect to console uh, but choose wisely uh, because once you go to console it's uh, sometimes it's difficult to get out of that because of the um, escape uh, characters it's a little um, tough so make sure you really want to connect to console I don't want to connect to console uh, so let me connect to the docker itself and as you see the prompt change now I can ping um, let me show you all the processes so you can see the same processes all running here um, all my processes are running here what are the things installed and let me do the connectivity check so the, uh, first I'm going to ping the gateway gateway is success then I'm going to ping the DHCP server DHCP server is also a success okay now let me show you uh, on the app itself so I'm going to RDP uh, this image this docker image has inbuilt uh, remote desktop build so if you have a Ubuntu server or a uh, or a Windows you can simply go there and choose any of the remote uh, desktop terminal uh, use this IP address uh, in my case I have IP address 121 username and password is alpine alpine uh, so once you do that you will be logged in to uh, the docker container this is my docker container and as you can see um, the IP addresses so one of this eth0 is in mirror mode but eth0 eth0 has the IP address 61.121 and the eth1 is in mirroring mode also I have Wireshark running um, let me initiate the Wireshark okay uh, eth1 since it is mirroring and the uh, port is trunk I let me start some capture here and you can see I started seeing all sort of captures running from different switches to different switches right so all VLAN 61 traffic I'm seeing here I'm going to keep it running for some time and uh, just you can also transfer from docker app to your local machine and I'm going to do that next uh, and then you can visualize things um, maybe locally so I, I hope you find it interesting and um, uh, make your own use case why you want to run a docker container uh, what you would like to do that uh, post that uh, if, if you happen to run one uh, I, I'll be happy to hear your experience you can put that in comments thank you thank you for watching